Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Got to start with that. Hey. Welcome to our December Moonshot Call. Um, I'm Kendra Kobler. I'm your Moonshot host. Please introduce yourself in the chat and let us know where you're dialing in from. And I will be muting everybody momentarily. So that's your little warning. Quick logistics. Um, feel free to choose between speaker or gallery view and keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking, please. And I will mute everybody now if you don't mind. <coughs> There we go. Sorry, everyone. And before we kick off our exciting agenda today with our very special guest, I first want to honor our progress that we've made towards prevention in 2021. As you might all already know, and I will share the link right after this, on our Moonshot landing page, we have a counter that sums up all of the organizations involved in the Wellness Moonshot and the number of individuals that are impacted by this important movement. And as of today, we are at 4,518 organizations impacting over 155 million people, which is very, very exciting. Go team. Um, and I now have the pleasure of introducing Susie Ellis, the chair and CEO of the Global Wellness Institute, who will introduce our featured speaker. Thank you, Kendra. And it is, may I say, an honor for me to introduce Dr. Richard Carmona, 17th Surgeon General of the United States and Head of Health Innovations at um, the Canyon Ranch. And what can I say? What we should know on this call is that it's really Dr. Carmona who was the originator of the vision of the Wellness Moonshot, a world free of preventable disease. He can talk a little more about how that all came about, but um, it's truly an honor to have him with us today. And there's a photo of um, when his voice was very, very strong and Renee <laughs> Moorefield and I are on the stage at the Global Wellness Summit in Boston just a couple weeks ago. And uh, we introduced the moonshot, which you'll also see for 2022. So um, Rich, I think of him as um, uh, the champion for wellness globally, the originator of the Wellness Moonshot, a world free of preventable disease. And um, more importantly, my friend, and I get to call him Rich, and he's so good about letting other people call him Rich that it just feels so, um, what an honor to call the 17th Surgeon General of the US uh, by his first name. Rich Carmona. Rich, you're muted. I'm sorry. Thank you, Susie. I thought Kendra was going to unmute us as we spoke. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thanks so much for the introduction. Undeserving, Susie. Um, happy that I get called. I think people call me whatever they like, but Rich is perfect. And Susie gave me credit for this. I got to share that with Susie because I'm privileged to work with her for many years. And we're always trying to innovate and provide something new and a new challenge and really disseminated from phone calls just before a meeting a number of years ago where we, she, she really inspired me to do think bigger. And we came up with this idea and as you hear, the rest is history. But when we talk about wellness, and now's the perfect time because this is the month of honor on our calendar for December, is, you know, I, I, I want to honor all of my colleagues within Global Wellness Institute and Global Wellness Summit because you all have, have, have really made this a reality, this idea that we came up with that rather than just looking at small things, let's take on the world because there is such a, um, a mounting preventable disease and economic burden that we're drowning in. Some of it is because of our poor behavioral choices. We don't eat right. We don't sleep right. We live in stressful situations, COVID, one of them right now. But also, one of the things that we thought about was, well, what about those people that suffer from a lack of wellness because they don't have access? So we wanted to really make a wide, wide uh, tent, if you will, and deal with all of the preventable illness. That is things that we can control by our behaviors, which are featured at every one of our meetings as to mind, body, and spirit contributions. But also, what do we do in those communities where 
they can't get clean water. Our children are dying because they have no nutrition and the sanitation is deplorable. So, you know, we live in a world where a couple of billion people live on less than a dollar a day, where thousands of children die every month from dehydration, infection, all preventable. So as Susie and I spoke through this, I said, you know, wellness in the uh, developed world is usually related to bad behavioral choices. Achieving wellness in the developing world is usually a much different challenge because of scarcity of resources. But as Kendra said, when we opened, we have come a remarkably long way. Many organizations and academics have tried to do something like this, including the UN and the World Health Organization. None of them have been as successful as we and have the sustainability across 60 or 70 countries globally. And every year it grows because people are passionate about the value proposition that we share to create a world free of preventable disease. This will take decades, but we started what we do know, the trajectory we are on as the United States or many other nations is unsustainable. As the disease and economic burden mounts, people's lives are being cut short at a higher cost. Hospitalizations, chronic diseases, medicines. We have the opportunity to change the trajectory of wellness in the world and not have it looked at as a sidebar discussion in a big meeting, but really be the discussion in every single meeting, every single one. And when you look at the agendas that Susie and Nancy and Kendra and the team put together, every single one of those elements and our fellow subject matter experts who speak, they own a piece of wellness that when put together in aggregate, we are changing the world. So the great thing about this is, and Nancy, who I belovingly call our Sergeant Major, she keeps the troops in order. She keeps us focused. Susie, you know, is the, the consummate diplomat connected worldwide bringing us all together to aggregate the best information. And every year we move that needle further and we do socially good things. And we're building a business around wellness. All of you are members prosper in your businesses. Global wellness grows as well. And you know, we have become the go-to place for people who wanna learn anything about real estate, about aesthetics, any element of wellness, you find it right here. Our great researchers, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them. Every time I see them, I give them a hug because they are just phenomenal. They're as good as any academic institution. And the reports that they have been generating are now used by academics to define what our market is. That's what we've done. And I say we because Susie and I and Nancy and Kendra, yeah, we're part of the team, but we recognize and we honor all of you today in this honor month for all you do to help make this a world free of preventable disease. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Carmona. And now is the time to look to our Moonshot audience to see if you have any questions for Dr. Carmona, because we'll do a brief Q&A, hopefully give a little rest to, to Dr. Carmona for his voice. But um, please put them in the chat and then Susie, Nancy, and I will, will look through the chat and pose some questions to Dr. Carmona directly. Thank you, Kendra. And while we're looking for questions, I have one, uh, Rich, and I'm wondering um, your perspective, you know, in terms of how COVID and this experience in the last years, um, how that has affected the perception of wellness globally. Uh, is it a silver lining? That's something we've talked about at the summit. Um, and how can we use that in the, the best way to really catapult uh, forward? Susie, great question. Thank you. When I look at the experience of almost two years with COVID, COVID the first pandemic, 102 years, you know, we pause and you look. And I look at it through different lenses. COVID has been a great uniter. It's been a great divider and it's been an accelerator. It has brought us together. It has divided us politically, but we'll put that aside. It's brought us much closer together, and we, we have an appreciation now 
for how we suffer in something like this where we don't have wellness. As human beings, we need to stay connected. Our neuroplastic networks, our, our, our brains, basically rely on touch, on a hug and a kiss, loving relation. So when you look at all the elements that we feature in global wellness, all of them are essential building blocks to optimizing wellness. And as I said at the last meeting, we're, we have a new characterization. Now we're moving toward precision wellness because I can tell you and my colleagues can tell you all of these things we call epigenetic inputs, sleeping, eating, loving relationships, you know, all of those things we've spoken about, they actually work by having you recode your genes, your, your body software packages to be able to make you a healthier person and appreciate wellness. So I, I, I think that um, we have a greater appreciation and as soon as you know it in the numbers, people uh, were struggling. They're struggling to get out and do exercise. They're struggling to meet with people. They have COVID exhaustion, uh, almost like a PTSD type of a mental health challenge because of being s segregated, not with our loved ones, not being able to do the things we, we do. So I think from that, people are appreciating the importance of maintaining wellness in their lives every day. I'm gonna jump in. There's a, um, a question, Rich, in the chat from Debbie Bellinger about bringing, how do you bring you know, fitness clubs into the wellness equation? I think you touched on it a little in terms of, and I think you know, everybody in every sector of the industry could ask the same question. But I think you know, what we feel is that there's an ecosystem that we've created, that we've helped to build um, bringing everybody into the wellness equation, but you yourself are a fitness person. I know um, usually when I see you at a meeting, you've either just come from the gym or on your way to the gym. So maybe you could just address the, the fitness, fitness and wellness. Yes, Sergeant Major, thank you. And I will add many times going or coming to the gym, I run into Susie before, <laughs> right. you know, what, what that says is, is that, you know, we are walking to talk because we are committed to stay moving, whatever that happens to be. So I can give you a perfect example. Uh, the Planet Fitness Company, well, of which we have members, Lynn and, uh, and Victor Brick and others, uh, they are a global organization. They reached out to me when COVID started and said, we recognize the importance of physical activity and bringing people together. We wanna to do it safely. Can you help us keep these gyms open? Not only for exercise, but for places where people can come together as humanity and share their humanity. So working with them for a year and a half, we've kept the doors open, we had social thing, cleaning, uh, all of the correct things. And um, the end result after a year and a half is we have no indication of any transmissible disease within any of the clubs. And one of the things I did when I got on board with them, I said, all right, you know, it's my brand at risk here too. I love you guys and I think you do a good job. I'm gonna start showing up. So I took a membership. I started showing up at Planet Fitness uh, gyms around the country, unannounced. Nobody knew I was just to go for a workout. And almost every time, I mean, not almost every time I was there, the staff was engaging, always warned me about transmissibility, wear your mask, stay one machine away from anybody else. If you, they check your temperature, if you don't feel well, don't come in. And so we were able to sustain that element too, that I, I'm using only Planet Fitness as an example, there are many others, but that's a global organization where it worked. And I think that's important. When we face these challenges and, and we are still in the pursuit of wellness, we have to be innovative, you know, and we take some chances, a little risk and benefit relationship, but locking people away for two years with no outside activity would be surely very detrimental to mental and physical health. So I, I hope that answers the question. Susie or Nancy, do you want to pick the next question or would you like me to from the chat? Yeah, why don't you take that one? Okay. I like this question from Amanda Winwood. If you can excuse the pun and have the moon on a stick, what, uh, would, be, what would be that be in terms of key agenda items over the next three years to make change in terms of investment and education? Perfect. Perfect. The, the, I think the overarching thing, and Susie and Nancy, and I spoke about this a lot, it is enhancing engagement and connection. Build a network even more. Have people join our teams so that they take this information back to their communities and in their own way identify 
this is something that Susie and I and Nancy early on, we struggled with because the answer to optimize wellness in a given community may be different in New York than it is in Saharan Africa, for instance. So what we said was, let's empower our team members with all of the knowledge that our aggregated members give us throughout the year in our institute, our research, and our presentations. And then let's make sure that we reach out with the calendar and we want them to honor what we put together as part of our team. But you figure out what is it is in your community. If there's unsafe drinking water, if there's lack of access to good food, if there's no safe recreation areas, do something that makes a difference as one of the essential elements of wellness. That's the important thing. So as we engage and connect and grow our universe of Global Wellness Institute and Summit, bringing your three people in, and then as Susie and Nancy will tell you, when we launched, I would get calls and, and I, I loved it. And Mike Ryson and other, others of us who deal in this field, and people would call from around the world and say, I'd like to do this, but I'm not sure where to start in my community. And we basically gave a free concept. What's the public health data in your community? You know, what's the ages? What's the disease burden? What's the immunization rate? And then we can help them find some low hanging fruit to start. Sometimes something that doesn't cost anything except some uh, volunteers to change something versus investing in something. So there's plenty of options. And I hope all of our colleagues listening will think through that lens and, and start um, challenging and inspiring your colleagues all over the world to just do one thing, change something in that environment that's going to optimize the wellness of whether it's a wealthy community or the poorest community. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the next one and and um, expand it a little. Um, Sharon Marie Sneed asked first of all, thanks you as many people are in the chat, uh, Rich, thanking you for your time and your insights. And her question is around the LGBTQ plus community and how the moonshot can honor and understand a community that's continuously overlooked and underserved in the wellness community. And I would just expand that to underserved communities um, in our world. I mean, we did something a, a little bit about this at the summit this year, but I think, you know, having room for everyone in this moonshot is a huge objective. And I wonder if you could just address that from just sort of inclusivity. Thank you so much. And as you know, it is a very strongly trending area in corporate America, where I sit on corporate boards, ESG, environment, social, and governance, are metrics that we are being held accountable to. That is uh, gender, ethnicity, and of course, the LGBTQ um, issues. And so the way I look at it is pretty simple. And you know, maybe I can, I can recount something to you. It might, might give you my, my um, one of my sons, he, uh, I have several adopted children, special needs. And one of them married, doing okay. And they chose to start doing foster care. And they have two biologic children. One is six and one is four. And the first, the first baby a couple of years ago that they got was an African-American baby who was um, born to a mother with no prenatal care uh, and malnourished and at very high risk at birth because of uh, addiction to narcotics. They took the baby and, and what I remember most about marveling, these two little kids, both of whom have light brown, blonde hair, one with very blue eyes, the other brown, and no question they are as white as white, you know, just Anglo. Good kids, my grandkids. This little black baby, they would pick up and say, this is my sister, I love her. They were colorblind. And that's what we need in this world now. We need to judge people by the quality of their character, not the color of their skin, nor their sexual orientation. If they are good citizens, if they are committed, if they, they're welcome on our tent, Nancy and, and Susie will tell you, come on down because we are a bastion for equality and equity in everything we do. And we, we want to continue to expand into those spaces where we can be the champion of equity and equality. And we practice that in everything we do right now. Susie works hard to make sure, and Nancy, that our uh, representatives on our, on our board, Institute Summit, that we have good diversity there as well. So I, I'm, I'm doing a shout out to all of you. And, and in this month of honor, I want to honor all of those populations who are still struggling with equity and equality. And you have a home with the Global Wellness Summit and the Global Wellness Institute. 
That is true. And, um, you know, we, we have an initiative that we're launching. We have a scholarship program we're launching with the summit. We're doing all that we can um, in our, maybe not all that we can, but we're beginning to do, um, to do things to really um, right the ship a little bit and to open our arms to more and more people and make sure that underserved communities are part of, it's all part of the wellness you know, empowering wellness, empowering everyone and making everyone part of this wonderful global tribe that we have, um, that we've created. And so I, I think, Susie, do you wanna comment on that? And then we'll, we can go to another question. Well, thank you. And, um, and it is an area that, you know, I've been in this field a long, long time that frankly, we have not done well with. The wellness world started out in the spa industry and we were quite elitist and, you know, it's, you know, but now there is so much more attention to it and we have such a long way to go. So I would just, um, you know, invite everyone on this call to do something. One thing I have learned is that, you know, you can't wait to do maybe the correct thing, but do something. And then that leads to the next thing and the next thing. And then eventually there's progress. And I, I have to say, and, you know, I was so honored, um, and Nancy, you could probably maybe talk to this a little bit better, that at the summit, um, um, Nancy surprised me with um, a, uh, a scholarship uh, that she had uh, created and people had supported for this very topic. Nancy, do you want to talk a little more? Sure. We, we launched at the summit um, the Susie Ellis Scholarship for Equity and Wellness. And this is a, this is a, you know, putting literally other people's money where our mouths are, which is really, that's the best way to do it. Um, but we're able to endow a scholarship with um, support from people in our community so that we could bring somebody to the summit each year, um, maybe more than one person who would otherwise not be able to afford to be there. Literally, it's a, a financial issue. Well-qualified, deeply interested and wanting to be part of this community, but unable to afford it from underserved communities, black and brown communities, LGBT+, whatever it is. Um, and we want to bring them to the summit and bring them into the fold, inspire them to go back to their communities, et cetera, et cetera. So thanks to the generosity of several of the um, board members and friends of ours over the years, the scholarships endowed for the next many years. And, um, and we hope to make a dent in that. I've asked Susie to do an onstage interview with a recipient at each summit so we could really shine a light and keep that light shining um, as long as we as long as we can. So and it was an honor to do it for Susie in honor of the 15th anniversary and all Susie has done in this continuous visionary leadership that she is um, very, you know, rightfully known for. This is the next, it's kind of a next chapter. And, you know, as this new, new era that we really see launching, this has got to be part of it. You know, I think we, this is, this is a, a time when that is, you know, it's always been critical. It's, it's, you know, very, very critical right now. Thank you, Nancy. And, and one of the things that um, Nancy knows is that, you know, you know, when this became a, a passion of mine, um, what I realized is that I was doing a lot of things incorrectly, and I, I recognize how many things I didn't do when I should have done. And so I wanted, you know, I always thought I'm going to bring this up at all of our meetings. I want to keep this top of mind, and I can't think of a better way to have this scholarship to talk about even right here. Okay, we get to talk about it again. Um, because I'd like to keep talking about it and, you know, invite um, more help, more ideas, um, and just keep moving forward on this. So um, thank you for whoever asked that question. And um, it, it was a, it's a great point to bring up all the time. You know, I think we probably have time for one more question for poor Rich, and then he should go and gargle and, you know, have chicken <laughs> soup and, you know, all kinds of things. But um, I do, I, and I think um, I'm going to go to Julie Wren's question, because I think it kind of embodies a lot of questions. And it's an excellent question for Rich, who is not only a medical doctor and a nurse and a wellness leader. Um, so, you know, and it, it, the question is, how do you see the medical professionals across all specific, you know, all specializations, embracing and supporting complementary therapy therapies that they can bring to their practices and which are often, or often overlooked, like lifestyle medicine and how you bring all those things together. This has been, 
you know, this was really a theme, literally, at the summit this year, the new, new era in health and wellness. We certainly see these worlds coming together in a way that they never have before, COVID being an, an unfortunate inspiration for it. But Rich, I wonder if you could address that. I'd be happy. Be, um, first and foremost, I think it's a great question. As we look at the evolution of what used to be called complementary, it is really becoming mainstream now. I give you an anecdote from my childhood. My grandmother, who spoke no English, was an immigrant. We never went to the doctor. She treated us with all kinds of incantations, prayers, um, medicinal things, witch hazel. We all got better. But what, what's so important there is all of our cultures have this medicine. Western medicine is only a couple hundred years old. If you look at Buddhist practices, you look at Ayurvedic, you go back 3,000 years. And really the beauty of this now is a lot of our colleagues in the scientific world are actually looking at these practices, acupuncture, Ayurvedic, uh, energy medicine, mindfulness is a big one now that's tied into meditation mindfulness. Now we have scientific information that these modalities actually work. We can actually show by measuring your, your neural networks in your brain. And we can look at productivity and measure psychometric tests. So. I think a lot more of the younger health professionals, especially, are embracing these concepts and incorporate them in. So uh, I, I said, when I started, like with my grandmother's analogy, uh, she would say, what do you mean complimentary? Most of my people use this. And that's an important point. In our US world of 330 million people in a world of almost 8 billion, there are many more people practicing what we call complimentary around the world. We chose to ignore it because of what I call the arrogance of Western medicine. I am happy to see that more and more it's being incorporated and it's, it's being tested and it should. And in fact, right now, uh, when I was Surgeon General, we started the National Institute for, uh, uh, let's say, I can't remember the acronym, but it's a National Institute up at NIH that specifically studies what we call complementary practices to be able to ascertain the scientific benefit. So all of those things are moving in the right way, as you suggested, uh, Nancy. <clears throat> Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Cremona, for joining us and for sharing about your family and predictions for 2022 and summing up everything that we've been going through from the health and wellness perspective. So we appreciate you joining us for this call and being our featured guests. We love having you and please go rest up. I wish we could send you chicken soup in the mail or something and it would still be hot upon arrival, but um, please rest your voice and thank you again. Thank you. And before I leave one comment, I want everybody to honor Kendra as well, because all these things we do that people take for granted at these meetings, this is the power behind us making it look easy. So Ken, wonderful. And we're so lucky to have you. Thank you. Oh. Have a holiday, everybody. Yay, Kendra. Thank you. So Thank Thank you. you. Thank Very you. kind. Thank you. Happy holidays to you too. Great. <laughs> well, I am now happy to introduce Renee Moorfield, who is the author of our Moonshot articles and is responsible for bringing the Moonshot mission to life with tangible guidance. She is the CEO of Wisdom Works, a social enterprise that builds well-being driven leaders, brands, and workplaces globally, and she is on the board of the Global Wellness Institute. Renee will speak on this month's focus, Honor. Over to you. Thank you, Kendra. And I, I always somehow in the queue of the agenda follow Rich, and that's always a very difficult thing to do because um, I feel myself, I don't know how many of you all feel your energy just rise so much just by listening to Rich. So, um, I, it is a privilege, really, to write these articles each month and to talk about the topics specific to all of us as wellness leaders. How can these articles support each one of you in advancing wellness in your teams, your organizations, but as importantly, in your own lives? So this month's topic of honor, I actually want to do a practice instead of talking. And, I, and now that I've heard Rich and I feel my energy up here and excitement, this is a practice for grounding, so that hopefully this is a perfect practice for all of us. So I'd like you to find a comfortable seated position, or if you are standing today, uh, make sure that you've got a nice firm base with your feet, meaning put your feet about hip width distance apart so that you really can feel the soles of your feet on the floor. 
And if you're seated for a moment, um, just notice where you are seated and how the chair is supporting you. So you might, for some people to be alert, they like to sit on the edge of their chair. For other people, they like the back of the chair to support them. So make a choice about what would be most supportive for your body. And close your eyes or find a stationary point on which to rest your gaze. If, that, if, you're, if you've got a stationary point, uh, make that not your computer. So maybe the tip end of your nose or a spot on the wall or the floor. Bringing into your awareness something you want to honor about your own wellness leadership this past year. And let this surface naturally. You don't need to work too hard to find something that you've either overcome an obstacle. Maybe you've been vulnerable as a source of strength. Maybe you have exquisitely taken care of yourself and been a role model for others. Maybe you've been able to manage your energy throughout your day in a way that you hadn't before or had a vision that really inspired others. Maybe you reached out for support. How do you honor your own wellness leadership in this pause, in this breath? Acknowledging the gifts you bring, the creativity and resourcefulness that you brought to overcoming challenges, and the mentors and guides that have supported you. Taking three more deep breaths. Whatever pace you want to take those breaths. And when you finish that third breath, if your eyes are closed, gently open your eyes. And if you find that just by the act of breathing, you needed to yawn or anything else, just go ahead and do that. Maybe yawn or stretch your chair. And then I'd like everyone to put into chat something you honor in yourself. Put one thing you honor in yourself, your own wellness leadership. We're closing the loop on 2021 and we're opening up to 2022. Awesome. Beautiful. Wow. Amazing. So, so much to honor here. Resilience, your gratitude, your stick to your ability for self-care. I'm working on that one myself. Optimism, uh, servant leadership, heart-centered servant leadership. You honor your own story and tenacity. My wish is that for that with everybody. Your ability to lead with kindness and peace. Your team, beautiful. Perseverance. Your volunteering. Your ability to trust and to find complementarity with anyone. So thank you all for that. This, this space of honoring, I, I think very rarely do we sit and pause for a moment and honor not only all those who have come before us, which is so important, and how we're paving the way for those who will come after us, but honoring ourselves. And so thank you for engaging in this practice. Thank you so much, Renee. I've never seen the chat so chatty before. You clearly hit a nerve. I think that's the perfect summary for 2021 to reflect as we gear up for 2022. So thank you for sharing that with us. I feel so empowered and inspired. Wonderful. So I'd now like to invite Susie Ellis and Nancy Davis, who you know are our CEO and Chief Creative Officer to briefly honor our 2021 Global Wellness Award winners. And I'm gonna do a quick screen share for you. 
And I'm, I'm going to promise to, we're going to keep this very, very brief because I know Jessica is on the call and we're running a little bit behind because we enthusiastically could have gone on all day with Dr. Carmona. Um, so Susie, would you like to start? We'll just do this very quickly. Um, yes, let me take, um, um, yeah, in, in general, um, we honor um, those who have um, served with distinction, who've done something distinctive. And this year at the Global Wellness Summit, um, it was just extremely um, special. Sue Friedland um, was honored as the leading woman in wellness. Some of you may know she was, um, you know, Dr. Danny Friedland was her husband and she has been the power behind a lot of the work that they've done. And so we were just thrilled to honor her. And um, then I'll mention Karen Mosley. She has uh, received the uh, award for leader in workplace wellness. And Nancy, um, and she heads up HERO. So she is one of the top people in the country for workplace wellness. And Nancy, why don't you talk about the other two? Sure, that? Christine Clinton. Um, some of you may know she leads the initiative, the Wellness for Children Initiative at the Institute. She is a champion of wellness. Um, not just for children. She's done a tremendous amount of work in um, wellness for cancer, um, but she is a, a real bright light that has been working for decades in this, and we were so thrilled to recognize her. Um, and Craig Kogut, who leads Pegasus Capital, um, who has put his money where his mouth is and will only invest in things that are sustainable and regenerative. He is a champion for climate action and, um, and a strong, strong supporter of um, wellness in every form. And we were really thrilled to honor these people this year. Um, and, and we think that they were very, very um, appropriate, important leaders and, um, and we're thrilled that three out of four of them were with us in Boston in person. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that summary, Susie and Nancy, and congrats to those award winners. Very exciting news. We'd love to honor them. And another quick winner we'd like to highlight is our December Moonshot winner. Um, each month we ask you all how you're using the Wellness Moonshot, and Amanda Winwood, who's based in Spain and the UK, has been honoring wellness to drive positive intent, energy, and development for her company, Made for Life Organic Skincare. She says she's been reaching for the moon and seeing all that is possible and is in the process of opening a 12th century farmhouse on 176 acres of woodlands, please invite me, for small retreats beginning in 2022. Um, and as for her prize, she gets her choice of the wellness moonshot calendar or a children's moonshot calendar. Amanda, we'd love for you to speak for a minute about your work. Well, I'm thrilled. So thank you all very much. Uh, and thank you, Kendra, for, for the uh, lovely intro. Um, I, I've written a few words and apologies because I go slightly over one minute, but not much. So I'm going to just, but it's important. And Renee, you did something that made me feel this is the right thing to do. So. Uh, we're a B Corp company. We're based in Cornwall in the UK. And, and I thought about honour because my brief was to think about honour. So honour is defined as the quality of knowing and doing what is right, which is clearly what you lovely folk do. At Made for Life Organics, we honour the planet when we hand blend beautiful oils with herbs and flowers to create 100% organic skincare. We honour people and health through our training, education and involvement with organisations like the SATCC and Sue Harmsworth. And to date, the Made for Life team have trained over two and a half thousand therapists and aestheticians to be able to welcome people going through cancer and other life challenging illnesses into their practice. It's been life changing, humbling and honouring for me too. this. And my belief is honour that should actually be a pillar within every business for, because positive intent and kindness uh, are an integral part, I think, of uh, doing what's right. So rather than talk about business so much, I want to share and give a gift to you and honour you. So in 1978, my mother gifted me a poem 
And this has been like a little anchor through for me through business and through life and sits at the very heartbeat really of Made for Life Organics. So this is me honoring you with a thank you. So my mother wrote to me these words, have confidence, be brave in this wide world, fear nothing for fear is a canker which gnaws at the core and damages the fruit. But fill your heart with love, for love is at the root of all life's joy and mystery. Remember, you are an amalgam of all those who have touched you and those who have touched them ad infinitum. But at the centre of all that lies the essence that is you. So thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. That was very inspiring. Maybe we'll bring you on to future Moonshot calls for advice from you and your mom. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. And by the way, speaking of Amanda's quick prize, the children's Moonshot calendar or has been uh, picked up in a holiday gift guide. It makes for a fun gift um, for kids this holiday. So I'll share that link in the chat. Just want a little shameless plug. And speaking of its amazing design, I'd love to introduce Jessica Jesse, the CEO and founder of Buddha Girl, who is also, and I have my bangles on, and uh, who is the designer of the 2022 calendar. She is here to reveal its bold and colorful look and speak to the monthly words she has chosen. Over to you, Jessica, and I have the video whenever you're ready, so just let me know. <laughs> you have and to you're unmute, Jessica. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Uh, really a wonderful way to, to kind of kick off the holidays, seeing everybody and, and honoring, um, you know, the, the cause that we all love and uh, the organization we all love. So uh, this is really wonderful for me. And um, so why don't we play the, 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 the video, uh, Kendra, and, and then I'll jump in because I think it's good for people to see it first and then go from there. Great. All right. It's a little, the, the music might surprise you, so get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hearing music. Can't hear the music. Kendra can hear it. Kendra, the music's not playing. We'll just go with the visuals then. <laughs> Gives us a chance to view the beautiful visuals. So exciting. So I guess the music didn't share, so sorry. But you got okay. to see the beautiful visual. visual. <laughs> the visuals, okay. So, um, you know, for those of you who, who were at the summit, you know, the, the inspiration was really Mother Earth and how she takes care of us and we have to take care of her. And uh, you can see in some of the months, you know, that there's just pure joy and, you know, it, it's, it's always about Mother Earth holding, you know, our, our flora and our, and our fauna and, you know, the sky with rain and sunshine and, and making things grow. But every once in a while, you'll see a little tear in Mother Earth's eye because she wants us to take care of her. And, um, you know, we have to pay attention we, because she is hurting sometimes. So that is the inspiration. But, you know, Dr. Carmona said something about, um, you know, how do we make it, how do we make this calendar and how do we make the moonshot really, you know, vibrant and work actionable? I think that the word is actionable. And we had always chosen words that were very evocative, things like emerge and you know, honor. And yes, you could find the, um, you know, the link to them in, pe in people's lives. But I really think that this year, um, uh, you know, I like to say, I, uh, you know, we nailed it because I think January 
we start off with a word assess. And, you know, we can all do that. We can assess our personal health. We can assess our family's health. We can assess our team's health, you know, our community and, and so on and so forth. But we can just step back and see, okay, you know, what can we do? What can I do personally, you know? And then once we, we kind of make that commitment to, to being a realist in assessing, you know, then we go into acceptance, you know, what's really good about us and what do we have to really work at, right? And after that, why don't we reflect in March, you know? And it's so the whole calendar is really a journey of these steps from that first assessment in January to really almost beginning your first step in July. So we're really doing mindful work, you know, the first six months to, to figure out, you know, what is it, you know, is it, can we provide, you know, clean water to some of our communities? Can we bring children into the equation? I mean, there's so many things. So let's think about it and really action in, in July. And then we start thinking, you know, preparing and accomplishing. So that's September, right? When, when we're almost, you say third quarter, that's when we're gonna accomplish because we've done all the steps that almost mother nature does when harvest comes in. You know, we plant the seed, we take care of it. And now in September, here comes our harvest. We're gonna accomplish in October, we're gonna see it's outcome right in november we're going to review it right and you know and in december we're going to end with the most powerful powerful thing which is um gratitude and thankfulness because thankfulness is something that is um you know inherently healthful it's good for your soul and sharing that gratitude with others is really most, most important. So I think that um, that journey in 22 is very actionable and easy to complete. So I hope that everybody, you know, really joins us in, in the calendar. Thank you so much, Jessica. It's beautiful. And we'll circulate the link shortly on how you can order um, your 2022 calendar. And we do want to note that next year's calendar is actually evergreen. We didn't print the actual year on it, so it can be used time and time again for years to come. And thank you so much for joining us, Jessica. Thank you for the time and happy holidays, everybody. Can I just thank say too that, you know, Jessica is the person who this was, she has been designing these for us since she started doing this for us. She does it every year as a passion project. It has enabled us to really make tangible what we're doing with the moonshot. It has given us the foundation for the monthly communications. It's given us the foundation on which Renee builds her content and it is beautiful. And the thing that Jessica has taught us all in the wellness world is that beauty um, is an enormously important part of, um, of wellness and of, you know, um, supporting something, you support the things you love that are beautiful, you want to be part of something that's beautiful, we hang these calendars in our homes, our offices, we talk about them, they're a real um, touchstone for what we're doing, and it could not be done without Jessica's extraordinary talent and generosity, so and I don't, it cannot be understated the impact Jessica has had on the moonshot and on our organization and on all of our lives. So much gratitude to you. Yes, Jessica, thank you, Jessica. I just want to add, and Jessica, thank you for being part of this this morning. Um, you know, I cannot even imagine the wellness moonshot, a world free of preventable disease without um, what you've added that you you are so gifted and thank you for gifting this. We are all benefiting from every one of the calendars. And of course I have them all from the past. And, um, and this year someone asked, you know, oh, I'd like that as my Zoom background. I think we're gonna see this, you know, this calendar everywhere. It is so 
um, vibrant, and I think we're all ready for that kind of thing. But you also have so much thoughtfulness. I don't know if everyone on the call knows about um, Jessica's company, Buddha Girl. Um, she's so well known in all of our tribe for the beautiful bangles that we're all wearing. And, um, and you, you just embody the beauty of, um, you know, us all coming together for such a great cause. So Jessica, thank you so much. Well, thank you guys. It's, it's easy to be inspired by, by the tribe. Let me tell you, you guys are fantastic. Thanks, Jessica. It's great to look forward to 2022. But before we do, and to close us out on the topic of honor, I invite Dara and Dave Feldman, the co-founders of Virtues Matter, to briefly share with us the power of language and how to honor others using virtues. Over to you, Dara. And you're on mute. So much enthusiasm, such a joy and honor to be with you all. Let's just run really, really quickly, running in place, running, 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 <laughs> rubbing our hands together, maybe giving ourselves a great big honoring hug. I want to honor you all for your purposefulness, staying engaged through this whole hour and the incredible gifts of elevating the virtues, who we truly are from Dr. Carmona and what he said that really is about the essence of our character and starting from there. So this is just a reminder that who we are are noble beings. And I have a question. Would you agree that that language can either heal or harm, inspire or put down? We've all been on both sides of that, right? So think about the narrative in our own heads and what that does to us, right? So perhaps you are committed to your well being, you stayed up all night, you created this beautiful, healthy lunch, you left it at home, you get to the office and you go to get your lunch and you not only say, oh my goodness, I'm so stupid, it is followed by what action? Show me. Right? We hit ourselves on the head. That is not healthy, right? Perhaps what we do instead of shaming and blaming, we just name that virtue and invite ourselves to mindfulness. Perhaps we can be more mindful and put our keys on our lunch. And then also, it's not just about the language we use with ourselves. It is about the language that we use with others. And as Jessica just reminded us, the power of gratitude. So I want you to think about someone that you would like to honor and share some form of gratitude, but not just thank you for being there. Uplifting and being very intentional about that virtue, that quality of character, and the evidence. Do you want to thank them for their generosity of time helping you out or their compassionate ear listening to you? I want to honor you all for your steadfast commitment to the well-being on a global scale. So being intentional. And how do we learn this language? One way is to really have a list of the virtues so that we can see them. And another is to do a daily virtues pick. So we're going to multitask, which isn't really great for our brains. But I'm going to read to you just the front of the virtues card. And I want you to just feel how honoring it can be. And then your homework is to take the time to be specific and not just the language that you use that Renee invited you to put in the chat, but also give yourself the gift of honoring yourself with what's the evidence? How were you all those gifts of character? So this is from the reflection card and Dave is gonna put it in the chat box. Honor is deep respect for what we know is right and true. It is living up to the virtues of our character. We honor our abilities by using them for a meaningful purpose. Honor is appreciation in action. We honor ourselves when we treat, we honor others when we treat them with dignity they deserve. Others can trust us to keep our word of honor. When we do things we are ashamed of, we restore our honor by taking responsibility and making amends. We do our duty whatever sacrifice is required. We act with integrity, not to be admired, but because it is the right thing to do. And the final quote from Oprah, 
If you seek what is honorable, what is good, what is the truth of your life, all other things you could not imagine come as a matter of course. And you, my friends, are living examples of that. And Dave and I from Virtues Matter honor you all. So much love and gratitude. Thank you so much, Dara. Very wise words to, to end on for honor. Thank you so much. We appreciate you both joining us and sharing. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to introduce Lisa Fasulo, the founder and director of the Center for Transformative Movement, known for her monthly movement segments with us. She is here to lead us in a celebratory moon dance, the perfectly fitting song to finish off the year under the moonlight. Um, feel free to turn up the volume on your end. I'll make sure the sound is working this time. And over to you, Lisa. Thank you, Kendra. I know it's right at the end, so if you have to leave, of course, just got to get off Zoom, but we'll just do this quickly. So today we're going to be dancing uh, and honoring ourselves and others from the perspective of permission. And I love the word permission because per is toward and a mission is not some onerous task that we have to do. It's a calling. It's a venture that brings out the best of us when we look at it that way. So um, just let's, we're going to be bringing in more permission for ourselves and thinking of when we felt the mission past, present, and moving forward. And we're also going to just gently push away and move out some of the lingering non-mission feelings that can hold us back, but we're honoring them as well. So let's start with just shoulders and hips in our, we'll stand up in our smaller and we'll then move out, okay? So here we go. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I hope you had a fruitful 2021 of Moonshot celebrations, and we look forward to seeing you in 2022. Happy holidays and happy new year. Thanks, Kendra. Thanks, Thank Nancy. you, Lisa. Thanks, 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 Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Gratitude. Thanks, Feel Kendra. free to unmute and say goodbye. Yeah, unmute everybody. <laughs> We can all say goodbye to each other. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Happy, Happy holiday. Have a great holiday. Bye.